my life is spiraling out of control. <laughs> Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. June has ended, so it is time for the June haul video. For the past couple of months during my haul videos, I'm like, oh my god, I bought so many bucks, can you believe it? And then the next month, I buy even more. So, guess what? Guess what, guys? For June, I bought over 30 books. Bought is not correct, I accumulated over 30 books. I'll explain what that means as we go, but whatever, let's just get started. <laughs> Oh wait, before we get started, don't forget to like and subscribe and ring the bell icon so you know when I upload new videos, I upload three days a week. In keeping with the last couple of months, we're just gonna start with Book of the Month. I actually unboxed Book of the Month on video um, a couple weeks ago when I received it, so I'll just quickly run through them again. The book that I selected for June was Ink Blood Sister Scribe by Emma Torsh. Still don't know how to pronounce that last name. I think it's Torsh. And then I added on The Hacienda by Isabel Canyas and Lone Women by Victor Laval, both horror-ish. Speaking of horror, I bought a crap ton of horror this month. I love to read horror in the summer. That's a thing that people do and I am one of those people. Let's take a look at what I grabbed. I'm really excited about all of them, but there were some like standout new releases. If you follow me on Instagram, you will have seen Mayfly by CJ Lead all over my Instagram because this has been such an anticipated read for me. Check out this cover, guys. This is one of the most gruesomely beautiful covers I've ever seen. Another wonderfully campy and beautiful book that came out is All Hollows by Christopher Golden. I hope you can see the cover properly uh, where it, it looks like a jack-o'-lantern face. This very much reminds me, premise-wise, I haven't read it, but premise-wise, this very much reminds me of Trick or Treat, the movie. It's possible that I'll save this one towards Halloween because it's a very Halloween-centric book, but I don't know if I can actually wait that long. That will see what happens. A more psychological sapphic horror that came out was Our Wives Under the Sea by Julia Armfield. This gives me the vibes of Annihilation by Jeff Vandermeer, so I'm really excited for it. And the next one, I'm not really sure if I'm gonna actually read it because it is YA, but I grabbed it because I've seen a lot of good hype about it. It's All the Dead Lie Down by Kiri or Kyrie or Macaulay. This has been categorized as cottage gore, so it's likened to things like T. Kingfisher's books, and you know, T. Kingfisher is my fave, so maybe we'll give it a shot. I picked up Sundial by Catriona Ward. I've wanted this one for a while, but I really, really hate the alternate cover. Um, but that's all I've ever seen in stores until I was at the bookshelf in Guelph, Ontario. And they happen to have the cover that I really wanted, so I snapped that up immediately. In the House in the Dark of the Woods by Laird Hunt was recommended to me by a coworker. She said it's very weird and strange and you have no idea what's happening for most of it, so yeah, why not? In the vein of something more like Alien, we have The Scourge Between Stars by Ness Brown. This is a Tor Nightfire novella, and you know I love me some Tor Nightfire, so we picked this up. It kind of reminds me of the Doom movie. Did you ever watch that? I hope it's just like that. I hope it's really campy and really fun. A definite exciting read for me is 19 Claws and a Black Bird by Augustina Basterica. Basterica, I don't know. This is the same author as Tender is the Flesh, but this is a collection of short stories and some of the short stories are like a page and a half long. So I, this is gonna be a beach read for me. I'm going up to my cottage multiple times during the summer. So this is coming with me until it's done. All the Blood We Share by Camilla Bruce is not shelved as horror. It's shelved as general fiction, which is fine, but it's a Puritan witch horror book. And I mean, it's always felt this way, but I've sort of decided for sure recently that I love Puritan stories. There's something so appealing and nasty about them. <laughs> Another Puritan story that I bought was The Boatman's Daughter by Andy Davidson. This was highly, highly recommended by my friend Kay Leverty. So I actually ordered a bunch of Andy Davidson books into the store I work in and picked this one up for myself and I'll be going back to the others. The final horror book that I picked up is Sister Maiden Monster by Lucy A. Snyder. This has been on my radar for ages, but I just keep forgetting about it and then I finally ordered it <laughs> for the store and for me. It's got another disgustingly awesome cover. Apparently this is like, a kinky eldritch horror apocalypse which how can you not want that <laughs> i totally lied just now when i said that was the last horror book but we are going into another section of the haul which is books that i got from work for free so this is the back of a book and then this is the spine of a book and then this is the front of the book so 
sometimes bookstores have to dispose of books and we rip the covers off and they are gotten rid of. I rescued The Chill and this middle grade book, Keeper of Lost, Keeper of the Lost Cities. I don't know. This is a horror book. This is a kid's book. I just, I just wanted them. I don't know. And then actually properly for free, Indigo gave out copies of Lessons in Chemistry by Bonnie Garmas to employees for promotional purposes, so I am meant to now read this and then talk about it. Will I? It's not my genre, but it does seem kind of cool and I do like science. There were some huge new releases that came out in June. The first one actually came out today as of filming, and it is The Frugal Wizard's Handbook for Surviving Medieval England by Brandon Sanderson. Look at these end papers. Stunning. My husband has already read this and he enjoyed it quite a bit. I'll get to it eventually, but to be fair, I actually heard a lot of it like by proxy from being around him, so I just wanted it for myself. The sequel to Her Majesty's Royal Coven by Juno Dawson came out, and that is The Shadow Cabinet. Very pretty cover. A new space opera called The Blighted Stars by Megan E. O'Keefe came out, and definitely my most anticipated read of the month. Witch King by Martha Wells, which I have actually heard mixed things about, but I really wanted it, so here we are. I also did a very uh, impulsive, probably stupid thing today, which was pick up the brand new copy of Daughter of the Pirate King by Trisha Leventhaler. Leventhaler. The reason this was impulsive and stupid is because I already own it in paperback. I haven't read it, it's YA. This cover's ugly. So why did I do this? Because it has stunning stenciled edges. See, I don't even know if you can see this picks up on camera. It also has really nice end papers that are not gonna pick up well on camera and a pretty okay naked heart back. Some more impulse buys that are not new, but they're just things that I saw and wanted. I got this fantasy anthology. You saw this in a book shopping video that I did with Sarah and Katie, but this is edited by Anne and Jeff Vandermeer. I love Jeff Vandermeer, one of my favorite authors. And it has works from Mary Shelley, Jules Verne, Oscar Wilde, blah, 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 lots of people. I finally picked up a copy of Can't Spell Treason Without Tea. This is by Rebecca Thorne. It's a self-published book, but it's sort of a spiritual successor, in my opinion, to uh, Legends and Lattes. It's another cozy fantasy, which is becoming more and more popular, so I'm excited to read this. It's cute. It's got this little guy in the front. Who's he? I got Fevered Star by Rebecca Roanhorse. This is the sequel to Black Sun, which is a book that I didn't love, but I have it. I have Black Sun in hardcover, and I'm probably gonna get rid of that and rebuy the paperback so that they match. If you don't already know this about me, I'm a huge fan of Dungeons and Dragons and Critical Role, and one of my favorite characters from Campaign 2 was Molly Mock, so I picked up The Nine Eyes of Lucian. This book is by Madeline Rue, but obviously based on the stories and characters by Matt Mercer and Talisa Jaffe. And the final category is... I don't know why I said it like that, is new releases that kind of flew under the radar. So same way we ended last month's new haul video, these are books that you should be excited about but you may not have heard of. First we have The Ferryman by Justin Cronin. This is a sci-fi that's shelved for whatever reason as fiction, so it sort of like slipped by a lot of people. It is a very similar premise to the movie The Island, which if you haven't seen was uh, probably the first movie to really make me question my sexuality. I showed this one already in my National Indigenous People's Day video, but it's To Shape a Dragon's Breath by Mona Quill Black Goose. This is an indigenous inspired fantasy with dragons, if you couldn't tell from the title, and it is the start of a brand new series. Then there's Psyche and Eros by Luna McNamara. This is a Greek mythology retelling that really like comes off more as fantasy in my opinion, but again, shelved as romance and general fiction, so we'll see. And the final book. The final book that I'm gonna be talking about, I think might be excluding the horror because horror is on another level for me, but this might be the book I'm looking forward to reading most out of everything I've shown today. It is Morgan Is My Name by Sophie Keach. This is a retelling or reimagining of a Morgan Le Fay story, so an Arthurian tale. I am a big fan of King Arthur and Arthurian stuff. If you don't know, Morgan Le Fay is one of the main villains in the stories of King Arthur, so I am really excited for this, as long as it's good. <laughs> and that's it! I wasn't counting, but I believe that's 31 books. There's actually also about the Barren Grounds by David A. Robertson, which I showed in my National Indigenous Day video, but I can't find it. 
I'm doing a whole big rearrangement of shelves and books right now, so it's just been sort of shifted in the mess. But that, that, that's also on with a list of what I bought in June. So I guess it's 32 books. I think I'm building shelves in a whole new room of my house. And I'm like, wow, I'm going to have so much space because I'm doing brand new shelves in a bigger room. But it turns out I don't know if I'm actually going to have enough space now that it's coming together. Buying 32 books maybe wasn't the best idea. But here we are. Before I go, don't forget to like and subscribe and ring the bell icon so you know when I upload new videos, I upload three days a week. I love you guys. Goodbye.